This is a super simple and easy old time way to have fresh tomatoes without any type of food preservation for months. But the key is you need to get them at the right time and know how to store them. We are headed into our first deep killing frost and freeze that's gonna happen tonight. So that means I need to come out to our high tunnel and pick all of our remaining tomatoes because if you let them freeze, then they can become damaged and this method will not work nearly as well. Tomatoes are technically a fruit and when they are green, they have more chlorophyll, but as they start to ripen, they begin to have more lycopene in them. So they will have your green tomato and then you'll often see where they just start to kind of turn. It's what we, I kind of call it like the blush phase. Well, your tomatoes do not actually have to be on the vine to continue ripening. And you can take your green and slightly blushing tomatoes off the vine, especially if your first frost is coming. And you can continue to store them in the house for weeks, if not months. The key is getting them in this early stage before they begin to full on ripen. Now, as long as they have begun to change even just a little bit in color, they will still ripen off of the vine and have great flavor. Unlike a lot of our other fruits, especially like winter squash, in my experience, I have taken winter squash off the vine and if it's not almost already ripe, it never really continues to develop a good flavor, nor does it fully ripen for me. However, we are in luck because that is not the case with tomatoes. I have already harvested the majority of our tomato harvest throughout the whole summer. We are actually well into November and this is the latest that we have went without a killing frost in my 41 years of living here in the Pacific Northwest, specifically in Western Washington. But it is coming tonight. We actually had a little bit of snow this morning, but we were above freezing. So I know this is my last chance to harvest the last of the tomatoes. So I am just coming out and we are going to be harvesting all of the tomatoes, regardless of where they fall in the color category. Now, one of the things that you'll sometimes see recommended is if you have a frost coming and you still have tomatoes on the vine, is to just simply rip up the whole plant. So you just would come down to the base, pull it up, dirt roots and all. And then if you've got a protected place that won't freeze, you can just shake the dirt off and you can hang it upside down. However, the key to this is it has to be in an area that it's not going to freeze. And I do not have an area except inside my house that won't freeze. So it's much easier for me to actually just take the tomatoes off the vine rather than hang them upside down. But if you have a garage that is insulated and you can keep from freezing, that can be a fast way to just rip all the plants out, not have to take each individual tomato off the vine and you can get the same type of storage long-term effect. Once you get your tomatoes in the house, we're gonna do some sorting and you've got some options once they have been sorted um, for how you're going to store them. So depending on how many you have, you could just leave them in some colanders. I however need my colanders back, so I'm going to be transferring them into this wire basket. Now, if all of my tomatoes were this larger size, this would work fine as is, but I've got some of these that are actually pretty small and because they're the Roma shape, these are actually uh, Amish paste and San Marzano Lungo, um, but if they shift when I'm moving this and go like that, then of course they're gonna fall right through. So if you had a piece of cardboard, you could definitely use that. You could layer it with newspaper. I don't happen to have either of those at the moment, but I do have a brown paper bag. So we're just going to line the inside of my wire basket with this brown paper bag. You could also use a wicker basket. Um, you could use a crate, really anything that's just breathable is what we're after. 
So some of the things we're gonna do is we're going to begin to sort through these and you wanna start with the greenest tomatoes first because those ones are going to take the longest to ripen. But you wanna make sure that you're not trying to store any that have cracks in them. So this one, we have cracks that are more than surface deep, so that is gonna be prone to rot. Um, and sometimes even if they've started to turn color, like that one was quite a big split, and you can see this one's actually already starting to decay, and these have only been in the house for two days since I harvest them. So this one's just gonna go in the compost pile. A few other things, this one you can see, it's really hard for me to tell if that's more than surface level deep and you could have some rot that's starting to set in there and then that could spread to the rest of them. So I'm not even gonna bother storing the ones that look like this. Um, or if they've actually got, you know, like a hole um, that's been penetrated. So you just kinda wanna go through, put these ones aside. They're not gonna be the ones that you are going to try to store for long term. So our really green tomatoes like this they don't really have any sign of beginning to ripen um, or being what we would call at the break point. So the break point is when you've got tomatoes that are like this, and you can see they're kind of starting to blush. They started to turn a little bit of yellow. They already have a little bit of coloring on them. These will continue to ripen off the vine and have just as much flavor as a vine ripened tomato. And of course, these guys are even further along. Um, they will continue to ripen as well. Now. And this one, you can see it's got more green on it than these, but it still does have some of those, that blushing color. So this will continue to ripen as well and have a lot of flavor. So I kind of have these separated out because they're further along in their ripening stage for the most part. Um, that one's pretty green. So I'm gonna go through these guys that are my really, really green tomatoes, and they are the ones that are gonna go on the bottom level. Now, they will ripen. Sometimes it'll take them a couple of months the warmer the room temperature, the faster that they will ripen. But I'm not really after getting these to ripen really fast. I'm going to just be using these as they ripen more in our fresh eating. I'm not trying to get this big batch to ripen to do any type of preserving with it. And I know that these aren't going to have as much flavor, these ones that are really, really green when they first, uh, when they were harvested and came in, um, as these guys that will. But with the green tomatoes, you know, you can make a really awesome green tomato chili, fried green tomatoes, obviously. You can just dice these up and add them to soups and stews, etc., as is. Or you can ferment them. Fermented green tomatoes are actually really good. They taste like a pickled, uh, but they're a pickled tomato, obviously. And if you haven't snagged my book, Everything Worth Preserving yet, which is still available for pre-order, you get both the hardback physical copy and the digital version for free when you pre-order the hardback copy. And we'll have the link below so you can go and check that out with some other goodies, which goes over all of the different methods of preserving food, not just one. So green tomatoes that are basically blemish free are going to go down as our bottom layer. You know, this one, I know it's probably hard to tell on the camera, but you can see where we've got a couple of these almost just look like blemish, but this is actually a soft spot that's starting to rot. So you could cut this off and use this portion right away, but we definitely do not want to let this one go in the batch for our longer term storage. And again, like this one, you can see there's quite a bit of damage here at the end. And we've also got a puncture up here. So this is definitely a no-go for our storage box. And I'm just gonna sort through these. And again, I'm trying to just put the most green tomatoes as our bottom layer. So here we're kind of reaching more of the blush stage. Now, you will see where sometimes people will recommend wrapping their tomatoes in newspaper. And the reasoning or the thought behind that is if you're trying to get ripen them faster, it's thought that if you wrap them in the newspaper, that it will trap the ethylene gas and it will make them ripen faster. But I'm not interested in getting these to ripen faster. I'm just interested in keeping them and using them as they become ripe. So I am not going to be wrapping them individually in the newspaper. Now, all, sometimes instead of wrapping each tomato individually, which 
there is the ripening factor with the ethylene gas, but it's also, think of if you've ever heard that old adage, one bad apple spoils the barrel. Well, same thing with this. So oftentimes people will also wrap them with the newspaper thinking if they don't stay on top of it and one tomato starts to go bad, with it being inside that newspaper, it's not going to spread as quickly and cause some of the other tomatoes to ripe um, in their box or container. Um, you, we will be checking on these, even though we're doing a good job of sorting them now once they go into storage. So another thing people will do is just create a layer in the box. So this is obviously our first layer, and then they'll put a layer of newspaper down so that they can lift up that first layer to easily look at the bottom and make sure that they don't have anything that is starting to go bad or needs to be pulled. I only have a small amount here left, so I'm just going to put these all um, in two layers. You don't usually wanna go more than two layers because then you're gonna to start to have um, compaction and too much weight and it can create you know, like pressure points and it's just harder to keep an eye on them and to sort through it when you're checking for any that have went bad. But because I know these are going to be ripening relatively quickly and I'm gonna be pulling these out fast. I'm not too worried that these are gonna be sitting on top of these green ones. I'll be able to still look through this because it's just one basket full really quickly and easy. So I'm kind of just putting these together in their stages. These are the ones that more kind of have the blush. So I'm putting them together here. And ideally, if you, when you are harvesting them, if you can get them with this little bit of stem still on the end, this is great. This is true for apples, winter squash, really anything that you're picking. If the stem is on the end, then it doesn't open it up to oxygen. So this one will break down faster versus one that still has the stem on. So you can see a lot of these don't have the stem on, but if you can get them and harvest them with the stem on, it will help in how long they stay on the shelf. So then we come to our smaller ones, and these are a strawberry something tomato. I will look that up and make sure I put it below in the video description. So we grew these this year as a, kind of like as a cherry tomato, and the coloring is just gorgeous on them. So you can see when they first um, start to come on, you know, they have a lot of green, but they immediately start to have this deep purple coloring. But as they begin to ripen, the green part will begin to change color. So this one will continue to ripen because it's already got that color change. Um, but it was really easy with these little guys to just actually clip the, the vine, the stem, rather than try to pull each one off individually. So I'm gonna set those here. This one, that actually has a, a blemish on it, so I'm gonna pull that. But as they get closer to being truly ripe, you can see this is why they're called the strawberry because they start to turn this really pretty pink blush color so this one is, these are the ones that are starting to, they're almost ripe. So I'm just gonna set those, those here just to go for a couple of more days before they're ready to harvest. So here you have it. Here are all of my green tomatoes in various stages and we'll be harvesting off of these and eating them usually clear through until Christmas. The really green ones usually will last for at least a couple of months, but keeping an eye on them. And then these guys here, they will probably be ready to use up um, and be fully ripe within the really red ones within this week. These ones will take a little bit longer. So you can store, they do great at room temperature uh, with the tomatoes. So I will just be storing these actually just in our back pantry, but they don't have to go anywhere special. You could even just tuck them into the corner of your kitchen. And if you have a really small amount, sometimes people will just actually line their window seal with them. They do not, however, need daylight in order to continue ripening. So don't worry about putting them like in a sunny window sill or somewhere like that. They'll be just fine. It's more temperature that affects their ability to ripen. And usually ideally between like 65 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit is kind of our sweet spot when we have the tomatoes like this. And if you are after other ways to preserve and store the harvest that doesn't include canning, freezing, dehydrating, etc., but using root cellar techniques, even though these aren't going in a root cellar, check out the video that I did on how we store a year's worth of potatoes without a root cellar.